Hey guys, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. So many of you asked me about the Red Hat certification that I did last week. And so I thought I'd do a small video about it. I'm not going to talk about the content of the exam because there is an NDA there that I have to respect. So don't expect anything on that side. But I can share with you some information about the exam. And you can eventually schedule one if you want to do that. Now, just to make sure to be in the context here, um, I just wanted to share a little bit with you guys uh, my path. I'm not uh, very keen uh, to talk about my personal life, but just to give you a little information about the context, uh, the context uh, from where I come from. Um, I was actually uh, a professional musician for almost 25 years. I started to play when I was 14 and that was my whole life um, until 2013. I, I was lucky, I was traveling all around the world and I was playing classical music in an orchestra. Double bass was my instrument. You can, I think, still uh, find me on Spotify. I think one of my recordings is still on there somewhere. And then I changed, uh, decided to change my, my life. And um, I was lucky enough to, um, uh, to be able to enter at Apple for a couple of years, uh, which was uh, a great experience. And then I went on to look for other experiences. And I landed then on, on Linux a um, couple of years ago. And uh, then I, since then, I wanted to actually uh, dig a little bit deeper in here. So that wh that's why I decided to do the certification. That was one of my goals uh, since a couple of, I would, I would say probably half a year or longer. Uh, but then due to the pandemic, it went a little longer in time. And so when I started to explore about the possibilities for Linux certifications, I came across, uh, of course, two, uh, two of the biggest uh, certifications. One is the LPIC exam which consists of two certifications. There is the LPIC-1 and the LPIC-2 exam. The LPIC exam is going to cover everything, basically what's also in the Red Hat certification. The difference between the two is the Red Hat certification. It uh, is based on the Red Hat operating system, whereas the LPIC exam is a little bit more general. Um, the big difference between these two certifications is the format because the Red Hat certification is a practical certification. That means you're going to be uh, you're going to be working on a server and uh, the exam is going to be three hours. And during those three hours, you will have several steps to perform live on a server. And that's the main difference because the LPIC exam is uh, it's basically a question with multiple answers. So you will have to go through several questions. I don't remember how many questions are there, uh, but for every question, you will have several choices of answers and, and you will be basically scored upon how many answers you, you did correctly. Whereas on the Red Hat exam, it's really practical. That means you will have to perform on a server several tasks and you're going to be basically getting points whether you did this task uh, correctly or not. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of personal preferences. I prefer a practical exam because, uh, you know, it's a hands-on exam and you just have to put your fingers in the terminal and you have the time factor, which could be a stress. Uh, so it's, it's a very um, compelling exam for me. So between the two, I decided to go with the Red Hat because it's a, pra it's a practical exam. So how did I prepare for this exam? So the preparation takes time. Uh, two main sources for me of, um, well, I would say three main sources of information or of, you know, of, of what I could, what I learned about this for this certification. One is the Linux Academy, which offers great, great courses uh, also for the Red Hat certification. Um, another one uh, is, of course, the internet. You find, of course, on the internet a lot of resources uh, to prepare also for the certification. Um, and the third one is also a, a video course, a, a certification preparation course that I did with uh, Sander van Vogt, um, uh, who has actually very good video courses about specifically for the certifications. So these were these were my three main sources for the for you know for preparing for the exam, and then of course uh, you have to just practice a lot because the exam objectives we're going to look at them in a second are a lot. There is a lot to cover, and you don't know what's coming in the exam because uh, it's it's uh, you know it's everything might be changing every time by every 
um, applicant. I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, there is a lot to prepare and there is a lot to know. And the best way to to get ready is to really practice, 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 practice. Um, there is nothing better than that, really. And so I wanted to sh to check with you guys just your, for those of you who are interested in this. Uh, uh, this is the Red Hat uh, website about the system administration uh, system administration exam. Uh, the price here you can see it depends. It's going to depend on the country. The first time you log into this website, it's going to ask you where is your location, and based on that, it's going to show you also the price probably in different currencies as well. This is the one I'm getting here, and uh, of course now we are still in the time of the pandemic. So Red Hat is also offering the possibility to make the certification at home. That's that's the choice I did. Um, and there are several rules for that. I'm not going to go too much in there because it's also under NDA. Um, but there are rules that you will have to follow if you want to do the certification at home. And once you decide for that, uh, they will send you all the details, what you have to, uh, what you have to do, what you have to have in terms of requirements for hardware and so on. Um, now. The, let's go here to the website and you can see here is just a small overview for who this exam is and what are the prerequisites. Of course, they recommend you to make uh, their trainings. It's one possibility, uh, but you can also train, of course, with other materials. Um, now, if we go to the objectives, this is actually where things you know, start to that we are going to the meeting here. So as you can see, the list is extremely long. Uh, we have a lot of things to prepare uh, for the certification. Now, I'm not going to throw all of them, of course, here, uh, but just so you have a, a little bit of understanding what they are asking of you here, these are basically the essential uh, skills um, for the Linux operating system. So understanding and using essential tools uh, like input out of, uh, output redirection, using grepper regular expressions, using SSH, using um, uh, tar, star, gzip, uh, creating and editing text files with Vim, because Vim is a standard editor in RHEL. And we have, of course, creating, deleting, copying, moving files, creating hard soft links. And we have uh, the second block here. It's the creating si simple shell scripts. Now, it, this is a basic understanding of shell scripts. Uh, it's, it's not... Um, uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a complete course about, uh, about shell scripting. And then we have operating running systems. So you'll need to basically boot, reboot and shut down the machine normally, or you have to boot the system in different, different targets, interrupt the boot process in order to gain access to a system. Uh, you have to identify CPU, memory, intensity processes and kill processes. And you can see also some others. Now we have configure local storage. This is all about partitioning um, and uh, you know GPT, MBR, legacy systems, um, logical volumes, and, uh, and file systems like ext4, xfs, and so on. And we have also here deploy and configure and maintain systems. So we basically have to you know be able to run tasks using cron or the add uh, daemon which i'm going to explore a little bit later also here on the channel because i find this is a very cool uh, it's definitely a very cool uh, thing to have uh, starting and stopping services configure services to start automatically at boot configure also system uh, systems to boot in a specific target um, and there are some task, tasks which are uh, red hat um, centered here like for example install and update software packages from from red hat network um, and work also with package uh, package modules uh, module streams so this is specific to red hat and i think also to centos and I think to Fedora as well, uh, all these distributions which are rel based basically. Um, then we have networking. Uh, we need to configure IPv4 uh, from the command line or uh, using a text utility, um, configuring host resolution, uh, configuring network services, and also the firewall. Uh, firewall CMD, this is the standard firewall also that comes in Fedora, it's firewall D. Then, of course, we have the two very important, uh, one very important block is manage users and groups. Uh, so how you can create um, users, delete, modify, passwords, groups, etc, etc. Now, for security, uh, this is going to be basically uh, a module 
which is going to cover three things. The firewall, again, uh, the access control list, the ACLs. The ACLs is basically, uh, you know, in Linux, when you have a directory or uh, let's say you have one directory, normally it has one owner and one group ownership and the owner has his own permissions and the group has his own permission and other users have had a permission. So it's a basically, uh, you know, uh, it's a very clear structure. But what if, for example, one directory has one owner and one group, but you have a user which is not the owner and it's not belonging to the group, but you want to, you want to, you're saying basically this user should actually also have access to this file, even he's not the owner and it doesn't belong to the group. Uh, so how do I do this? Well, that's where the ACL come in. Uh, come, come in. Uh, the access control list is basically a way to give access to a, to a directory, in this case, to a user which is not the owner and is not belonging to the group. So that's a very important aspect as well. And of course, SSH, uh, it's a very important aspect too. And because this is, of course, focused on, on, on RHEL, uh, SE Linux is also um, one of the things uh, here in the certification. Um, SE Linux is something that I'm going to also explore uh, in the coming upcoming videos on a Fedora installation. It's basically something that one could compare with App Armor, which is also another, um, it's, I think it's called mandatory access control. Um, it's a system which basically allows you to control the, uh, the system a little bit stricter. Uh, SE Linux is using uh, labels and booleans to do that, and App Armor is using, I think, path files. Um, but I will look uh, more into App Armor because I haven't used it uh, myself. Um, but SE Linux is what you find in the certification. And the last one is the managing containers. Now, this one was actually introduced, if I'm not mistaken, in September of last year. So Red Hat decided basically to put this extra um, content for the certification, which is uh, in total now three hours. I think before it was two and a half hours, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, so these are all the uh, points that you need to prepare for the certification. And yeah, what you need to know here, there is uh, everything about the exam uh, format that are going to explain you how you can do it, scores reporting and how you can prepare. Of course, they recommend their preparation, but as I said before, you can, you can choose, of course, other ways as well. And then the skill path. So this is what they recommend going through the list of things that you need to do to get the certification. So... Uh, as I said, I cannot go into the content of the exam, but um, the only thing I can tell you is if you decide to go for the certification, um, if, you know, of course, if you are an experienced Linux uh, administrator already, uh, you, you don't have anything that I can, there's nothing I can tell you that you probably don't know. Uh, but if you are looking into doing into, into uh, this certification, um, and you're not sure, I just can tell you the best way to pass this certification is practice, practice, practice. It's doing a lot of uh, labs yourself as well. Be creative, create you know, your own virtual servers, uh, try to, um, you know, try to create your NFS servers, your Samba, uh, Samba servers, create your shares, create your uh, theme provisioning volumes. Um, and keep practicing this until you get to the exam because there is so much to prepare that if you don't practice constantly, you're, you're going to forget some things. It's just the way it is. Um, so that's my, that's my big recommendation. Anyway, so this is all actually I can tell you about the certification. I actually enjoy the preparation as well because I learned a lot uh, from the preparation as well. And during the uh, studies, when I was studying also with the Linux Academy videos and also the Sander van Vught, uh, video course, um, I discovered also a lot of things that I didn't know. And because anyway, I love Linux, uh, it's always nice for me to discover new things. Now, the next step for me is going to be probably the RHCE, uh, the Certified Engineer, which is going to be uh, basically all about Ansible. Uh, I think Red Hat changed uh, RHCE with the with this edition with the Red, with RHEL 8 because with RHEL 7, I think it was advanced Linux, um, but you know we are moving toward Ansible more and more. So they decided to go with uh, with a certification basically mostly focused on Ansible. So that's the one probably I'm going to tackle next. 
um and uh, we'll see I, now i just did this one and i'm gonna take some time off <laughs> studying and then maybe after a few months i will get uh, again the energy to begin studying again for ansible so this is all i wanted to share with you guys about the certification if you have any question about it uh, let me know in the comments below i will try to answer you uh, as usual as soon as i can but please understand that i will not be able to answer any question about uh, content of the examination because that's um, that's uh, that is actually under NDA. So I hope that you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, that always helps me out. And if you want to support my work, you can come over to Patreon or you can donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you again for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.